Who we're getting closer and closer. Dallas Mavericks versus Los Angeles Clippers. Are you feeling it with me, Isaac Harris? Oh, I'm feeling it. I'm I'm ready. Game one, I called it on yesterday's pod. Game one is going to the Dallas Mavericks. Ooh, holding on to it. Two days. He had time to sleep on it. Still calling it. Dallas Mavericks, game one. It's the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, my co host, contributor at Mavs.com, the game one, Colin Crooner, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? I really do think they're going to win. It's not just a a, a fun thing. I, I really do think they take game one. I've been saying this all week. I believe it. I think they've been ready for this. I think they're going to be hyped up for it. And I think their effort and energy and everything, yeah, I think they're going to want to set a, set a tone for the series. Okay. We're feeling it. We're feeling game one. I'll go with you, I guess. <laughs> I'm coming down. If they lose, I'm coming down with you anyway. It's going to be locked on Mavs, hose calls game one. They believe. Uh, all right. Today's episode, we are going to break out some predictions. We'll talk a little bit about practice, the Dallas Mavericks practice again. Carla had a great quote about pressure. We discussed Ty Lue's comments about pressure in the pod on Monday, I believe. And then we'll get into uh, Chris Osborzingis had another comment about playing the four. He's sort of come around to something. He's sort of accepted now where he fits <laughs> in the Mavs offense. And so we're going to talk about that, break it all down. We'll get into that. And then we'll get into a couple predictions. And then at the end of the pod, I am joined by positive Chuck Mockler, Charles Mockler from the Locked On Clippers podcast to discuss everything Clippers. So if you don't, don't know a lot about this team, hear from a guy that knows a ton about this team. And that's Charles Mockler, who's been covering the Clippers for Locked On Clippers all season and is a diehard Clippers fan. And so he'll tell you everything you need to know. You uh, found so we'll one? I found a Clippers fan, and not only a Clippers wow. fan, one that does a podcast on this network, which is very rare. There's only two of those in existence. So. I know there's media. I know that media covers the Clippers, so in our Locked On <laughs> Clippers is great, but I didn't know they're actually fans who... He was a fan first, it. actually. That's Grew wild. into his role. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Michelob Ultra at only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Isaac, do you win because you're happy, or are you happy because you win? After the Mavericks win game one, they will be happy because they win. All right. Let's get into this. So we talked a couple days ago about how Ty Lu was asked the question about pressure for the LA Clippers. He was asked, is there pressure for this team? And his answer really shocked me because he seemed annoyed by the question. He seemed annoyed that he was asked about it again. Now, to his credit, Carlisle was also annoyed that he was asked about pressure again today, but he answered it in a different way. But Ty Lue said, no, there's no pressure on us. We're going in there. We're going to play our game, all that kind of stuff. Everything that a top seed would say, like a number one seed, a, a team that went in and has all the confidence in the world that they are better than the other team. That's the, that's what came off, to me at least, what Ty Lue said about pressure for the Clippers. He was also asked about Paul George and if there was pressure for him. And he said, no, well, which is complete garbage. There's tons of yeah. pressure on Paul George. He has to play better because – Remember last year when pandemic P and playoff P and all that, like that would trend every time he touched the court, every time he touched yeah. the court. And so, and it followed him all throughout the regular season. Playoff P, pandemic P would trend every single time on Twitter when he was playing. And that has followed him. This I feel like Ty, Ty Lue saying what he said shows us that like Paul George knows like it's like heavy on Paul George right now because yeah. I think I feel wanna, like there's a want to pile more on him. Yeah, I feel like there's a there's a healthy way in supportive way to be like, yeah, we have pressure. It's yes, part of right. it. Paul George <laughs> is a superstar. He knows he didn't play well last year and he wants to prove it wrong this year. Like I I just feel like that's a simple like lean into it type thing, but you know what? You do you. But coaches know that what they say to the media gets back to players. 
And oh, yeah. they know that it can be a motivator or it can be a cause of tension or drama, especially internally. And the players may not bring up things like, hey, why did you say that to the media? Why would a player do that? Right. Like these are sometimes young guys that don't like confrontation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. some of that stuff can just stick in your head. And so Carlisle today was asked the question, is there pressure for this Mavericks team going into the playoffs, playing the Clippers again and all that? And I thought his answer was pretty interesting. Here it is. You know, when you're part of the organization like the Dallas Mavericks and there's a game scheduled there's pressure to win that game yeah, and smirk. when you come and work for this organization you work for Mark Cuban you got to be somebody that loves pressure <laughs> and I keep getting questions about you know is there pressure to advance hell yeah there's pressure to advance and that's what that's what this is all about but you've got to love pressure and you got to you got to find ways to make pressure your friend and this is a difficult series. It's a tough series, um, but we're a championship organization and we're just, we're not just looking to advance one round of the playoffs. I mean, ultimately our goal is always to win a championship. And so, you know, we preach championship habits um, and in our, in our prep, you know, we're getting ready for a team that is a great basketball team in the Clippers with two major superstars and, and a, and a very well-constructed group of role players. And we're going to have to be on point. We're going to have to be right. Um, and it's a great challenge, but we're looking forward to it, man. I thought that was an interesting answer from Rick Carlisle because morale was high after practice today, I think. Dwight Powell came in. He was joking around with, you know, Mavs PR and then – Chris Porzingis came in, he was making jokes and he answered a question and he goes, man, that was a good answer by me. And he did a little fist pump. He was like messing with his biceps and stuff on the camera. Like it seems like morale is high. Uh, and I think that that's on purpose. I think Carlisle came in and he wanted morale. He wanted to boost them up and get this team pumped up for this game one and get them pumped up for this series, especially playing this team again. I think this answer by Carlisle was planned and I think it was on purpose to give this team confidence and also say yes this is real there is pressure for this team we're you're expected to win these games and we're expected to go in and compete at the highest level yeah I I think it's more honest and authentic more than like a planted like type of hey scripted out answer well, I just think he planned it but it's real I, yeah. I agree it's real I didn't, I'm not saying it's contrived yeah I just think it I just think it's just blunt honesty and I love it. Like, I think you could take his answer. I mean, I, yeah, he said the championship, you know, part of the organization, part of the history of it, but I think his answer should be every coach's answer. Like, yeah, yeah right. these are expectations. Of course there's pressure. We like that. That's part of it. And I, I loved, I love Carlisle's answer to that. And even tying in, we are a championship organization. Mark Cuban does have those expectations. We go for great here in Dallas. And it's kind of like a, a it was kind of a little sales pitch too of like, this is this is our expectation every year. <laughs> hey, like Kawhi. we've done it. <laughs> yeah, it's like we've won a title before. We've done that. This is our expectation. This is who we are. We want to do this. So uh, I, I thought it was great, great answer. I thought it was absolutely great as well. I took it as... You know, he wanted to get him pumped up and he, he planned it on purpose because he wanted to get it to get back to players like, hey, this is what we're all about. This is what we're there for. And I think that they pumped up players during practice today as well to get them ex excited for this. The Mavericks always rise to their competition this season. I've been doing a lot of these uh, previews. You'll hear the one with with you know, the Clippers at the end of this pod, but I've been doing a lot of these previews with hosts. And so many hosts, countless hosts, the Heat, the Bucks, the Hawks, a lot of teams have said, we play to the competition. And it seems like the Mavericks absolutely do that this season. And they've had some really big wins and wins against this two wins against this Clippers team. They believe they can beat them. And you know who else, you know, who doesn't believe that they can beat them? <laughs> a lot of people, Tyler. a lot of people. ESPN did a poll and it was 14 to one. Only one person picked the Mavericks to win. The Mavericks are playing with house money here. They are the nobody believes in us Mavericks, basically. Nobody believes in them to win. They're going to go in and they're going to play their game. And if they get hot from three, man, this could be a long series for the Clippers. And you know what? According to Bet Online AG, <laughs> the Clippers are minus 400 to win this series. Right, right. The book, the that's, books that's have a, them favored. That, that's huge. By a lot. They they have them favored in game one. The you know everybody's picking them. All that. It's see, I haven't heard one single person on TV or podcast or anything, pick the Mavericks to win in an upset. No, me neither. Not even us. Not yet. But maybe <laughs> wait, coming wait, soon. Wait till the second segment. Coming up, we'll do some predictions. We'll talk also about Chris Porzingis. 
is uh, comment about playing the four. We wanted to get into that because I thought that was pretty interesting. But before we do, rockauto.com is the place to get some uh, parts for your car or truck. And Coke in there almost said places to put down money. It's a family business serving auto parts online to customers for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com and shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet, whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Rockauto.com has a catalog that's remarkably easy to navigate. It's the same uh, for everybody. You go on there, you find the make, the model, the year of your car, you can find every single part that's going to fit exactly to your car. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? They know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into this answer from Christoph Porzingis. He was asked about playing the four. Now, this has been a thing with, with Porzingis recently. He's been very particular this season about where he gets his shots, when he plays his minutes, all that kind of stuff, where he plays. He's been very vocal about wanting to play the five in the Mavericks offense because he wants the option to be the roller or the you know pick and pop kind of guy. And so they've been playing him next to Maxi, and Maxi is the, you know the, is, plays the four. And in the playoffs last year, they played Dorian at the four, and, and Porzingis played the five. And so they've been playing that, but you, but last year they played a lot with Dwight Powell as the five on offense and Porzingis playing. They started about 30 games together last season. And so he's been very vocal about wanting to play the five, and now it's, it's kind of turning back around. They've been starting Dwight, Dwight Powell again like they did last year. He's been playing the five, and Porzingis is playing the four. And this answer today was about him playing the four, and I thought it was very interesting. He even admits that he kind of changed his, his tone about this. Yeah, we – I'm kind of actually – I realize now with the practices now that you know Dwight, uh, me and Dwight were playing a lot. Him at the five, I'm at the four. I'm used to, I'm more used to playing both positions now, just being on the perimeter from the beginning of the offense or being the trailer. And uh, and and no matter what situation you put me in, I kind of found you know little things that I can do and how I can I can be involved and and um, <clears throat> and some new plays that we have. So um, I feel like <clears throat> no matter how <laughs> Excuse me. No matter how we're gonna we're gonna match up or how we're gonna play, I'm I'm gonna try to find ways how I can be productive uh, within our offense and 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 make the game easier for Luca and, and for the rest of the guys. I found that very interesting that he said I've come around after a couple of practices. What did you take from that specific comment? Well, it just shows he's a little bit more open to it now. I mean earlier in the season, even after, you know, right after games, sometimes he's been asked about it and he's been very, very clear that I like playing the five, more comfortable playing the five. And this just seemed, it was a different change of tone for him. And so it seems like it's, it's making sense. He probably still has a preference, but at least he's, it sounds like he's more open to it. And he's like, Hey, I'm, I'm more comfortable playing both positions now because it, this isn't saying that he's never going to play the five. It's just, there, there are probably going to be times where he plays the five, but it, this allows them the flexibility based on some, some matchups to put another big next to him or play him at the five. And it seems like he's more open to that now. Yeah. I found that kind of, I find it really interesting that he came around to it. And he said, especially after a couple of practices, he got some time and we haven't had a lot of practices for the, the Mavericks, yeah. right? We haven't seen a lot of those. He didn't have an off season. He kind of just jumped in, you know, he had, he had a, you know, preseason last year, I guess, but that was just, that's so long ago at this point. I mean, just so incredibly long ago that now he's had, this time to implement some plays that he says, Oh, I can see the benefit in this of me playing the four Dwight playing the five or Willie playing the five or whoever decides to. And so I thought that was very positive. I thought it was a very positive thing. And it's true. He's, he's he is, I think he's better at, at the four than the five, especially because he's not an elite roller like the Mavericks need at that spot. Like, you know, like Dwight is like Willie Collie sign can be, they need that type of guy. And then Porzingis is spacing to help. Uh, and then they're probably going to need, you know, a couple of bigs here to, you know, help protect the rim, to help against Zoo, to, you know, a lot of different things like that. It's not like they're playing the Nuggets, but uh, they're probably going to need another big man like that on rebounds and all kinds of stuff. 
Yeah, and I, I could still see him closing games at the five. So much yeah, is about the yeah. closing lineups, but it's just a matter of throughout the game. For three and a half quarters, what is he comfortable playing with? Can you maximize his strengths when he's playing alongside another big? Well, can you maximize his happiness You know, as, if he's playing <laughs> with other bigs and you're sticking him in the corner? Is it do you going play the to four a- because you're happy, or do you play, <laughs> are you happy because you play the four? <laughs> it's incredible. It's like, no. Uh, but no, it's, it's just that there's just a different of the, and I know some people we've talked about this before. Some people might look at this and be like, what is the big deal about the positions? It doesn't matter in the NBA. It's just bad. in some offenses. It does make a difference. And yeah. for Rick Carlisle, he does have defined roles. We've talked about how in players lockers, they have these pieces of paper yeah. and it has like, well, there are three things that define who they, they have Leader. defined roles <laughs> in, in this offense and energy guy. Yeah, so it does matter. Roller. Here shooter yeah all kinds of stuff is written on there i used to keep a running list of them when i was in the locker room above all the stuff those are and i probably still have it of what josh mcroberts's thing said on it at the at the top of uh, their triangle it's like a triangle thing at the top of they normally have like one word and i remember dorian's always was was pitbull that was (laughs) that was his word (laughs) dale oh sorry wrong wrong pitbull all right let's get into some predictions Let's talk about these. So full disclosure, we're recording this before Lakers Warriors. So not hundred percent sure. We're assuming that the Lakers are going to play the Suns. You are rolling your eyes, but Hey, anything can happen. It's the playoffs, man. No, oh, I mean, I hope, I mean, gosh, I would love it. And, but I, I just think the Lakers are going to win big against golden state. Yeah. So, all right, let's get into some predictions. Uh, go ahead. Start off the bat. This is, this is a segment you wanted to do. So let's hear some predictions yeah. from you. Well, I think, yeah, I think Utah will play, uh, you know, Golden State or Memphis. I mean, I honestly, I could see Memphis beating Golden State in a game. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion, but I think Utah, you know, beats them. They're, they're a good veteran team. Uh, Denver, Portland, I honestly think Portland wins that. I think at this point, the last time I checked betonline.ag, because that's the place you want to be, uh, they <laughs> had Portland uh, actually as a favorite now. Um, the last the time series. I checked. Yeah, yeah, in the series. We'll check and that then, in a minute here. You know, Phoenix, I think they'll play the Lakers. And sorry, Phoenix. <laughs> I think the Lakers win that. Man, this Phoenix season, they're on pace to win 60 games in an 82-game season this year. Like, they would have got yeah. real close to that. An incredible season, and they could lose in the first round very easily. Like, they're probably expected to lose in the first round. What a what a awful, like, break for them. I know. I, I, I hate it for them. But Would, would you have picked anybody else against – Phoenix in round one, Mavs, Blazers, uh, not the Blazers, no. Warriors, Grizzlies, not the Warriors, not the Grizzlies. No, you would have picked Mavs and that's it. Not Blazers. I, I would have thought about it. Yeah. I mean, Phoenix is a good team, but they're not a team that I'm sitting there saying, oh, you're a juggernaut. Sorry. What about if they played against the Jazz? I don't know. That That's the tough one. I think I, I think I lean Phoenix, but it's just Nuggets. Me. Would you pick Nuggets against the Suns? Healthy? No, the way that they are. Let's say they, no, they play I'd this year. Sun, play Suns for round. sure. Suns for sure. And then Clippers. I'd pick the Clippers over them. Interesting. Suns are in such a weird spot, right? Like you'd pick certain teams, and it all it is about matchups in in the playoffs. So yeah. Uh, um. So yeah. In in the West, I mean, let's just talk Clippers Dallas. We only have a few minutes, so we probably won't even get to talk about the East. But Clips Dallas. This is the last time you'll hear from me um before they they tip off on saturday we'll have a couple more locked on maps uh, but i'm visiting some family so for me it's dallas and six that's what (laughs) i'm going with um i really have thought about it a lot uh mainly because you know i I, I'm not the person either that's going to sit on the pod and be like, oh, the finals every year, they're going to win the title. Uh, I want that, obviously, but I do try to be realistic about it too. But I honestly do think that they win this series. And I'm not trying to set the expectation up there of like, I'm going to be pissed if they don't because it totally makes sense uh, for the Clippers to beat them. They're not supposed to. The Mavs yeah. aren't supposed to win this. They're not supposed to, but I just think, I think Rick Carlisle will outcoach Ty Lue. Mm. I think Luka will be at MVP level. And I think KP will stay healthy enough to play through the series. And I think more than anything, their effort and their energy, I think that will be the thing that will disappoint me the most. If they go into the series and if they fight like heck and they still lose, I'm like, okay, you showed heart. But if, yeah. 
if they just like roll over and you see chemistry stuff, you, they're just not trying and they're getting beat. That's that I'll be very disappointed in that, but I don't think that happens. I think Dallas wins the series in six. Luca has an unreal si series and yeah. And they, they go on to play Utah in the second round. Clippers two years in a row getting ousted early. Like, yeah. Ooh, but, and yeah. the crazy thing about that is if they beat the Clippers, then they can beat anybody, right? I mean, yeah. maybe outside the Lakers, but if they beat the Clippers, then that path is there if you're going against Utah. Now, I have more hesitations about – I actually have more hesitation about them beating Utah than I do the Clippers. And that, that's really – it's weird because I would pick the Clippers over Utah. If they face off in a series, it probably doesn't make sense to some people. But, but yeah, I, I, th I just think Utah is such a well-oiled machine – and coming out of a, a very emotional series, if Dallas wins that series against the Clippers, I could see the Jazz steamrolling whoever they play in the first round, just waiting on Dallas, and it being a much, much harder series for them than the Clippers. But, yeah, and I, I think the Lakers are in the Western Conference Finals. If the Lakers are fully healthy, which you never know about LeBron because you don't know if he's ever Lakers fully going to be healthy again. Um, Lakers Mavs in the Western Conference Finals is what some of you think is my nightmare, but it's actually my dream. That's what it is. <laughs> Love that. Real, real quick, who's your pick? To, who's your pick to come out of the East? Come out of the East, man. It's so boring to say Brooklyn, but it just feels like they're the the team waiting to happen, and it's it's different than the Clippers last year, where they have just the firepower to overcome all of like all of their you know like chemistry concerns based on the amount of games they've played together. They can just overcome that with one on one offense. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I think it's just going to be Brooklyn because I don't I don't think the Sixers are are there yet. I don't know if they're playoff tested enough to get there. We've seen them go to the didn't they go to the Eastern Conference Finals or they were in a was it the second round of that Raptors Sixers series where Kawhi hit that shot? I think it was second round. So yeah, we haven't even seen them get to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I don't know. I, I'm I'm concerned about everybody else. Bucks they could get beat by the Heat in the first round, right? <laughs> like you know, I don't totally, think they will. But. It could totally happen, though. It happened last year. So, uh, yeah, I just don't see anybody beating them. Yeah, I actually think the Bucks will steamroll Miami. I think they beat them in, like, five. And because I, I think it's going to be a popular upset pick again. But I I go back and forth. Bucks, Philly, Brooklyn. You could ask me every other day, like, what you know, talent or the defense that Philly has or the chemistry and just is this Milwaukee's year. But I just – I can't bet against Kevin Durant in a talent that just of those three. I just can't. And I know. so it's if boring, they were in the same, if they're in the same conference as like the Lakers, you know, I just, you know, that'd be different, but I just can't bet against those three. And yeah. So I, I think it's, it's Brooklyn coming out of the East as boring as that is. Sixers is the second one. Cause they have the easiest path, right? They're going to play probably Washington or, or the Pacers and then Knicks or Hawks. Like there's no, like, if they don't make the Eastern Conference Finals, they oh. just fire everyone, right? Like, yeah, they gotta <laughs> split up Joel Embiid and Ben again. Simmons and <laughs> do, do everything. The process is back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Any other predictions for Mavs Clippers? Mavs in six is the official pick of Locked on Mavs. I'm, I'm, I'm locking it in right there. Let's do it. No, I'm, yeah. I mean, I think Luca has a monster series. I think we're going to have one game <clears throat> that Tim Hardaway wins a game for him. I think we're going to have like a 30, 32 oh, point game it. from, from Tim Hardaway. He's going to hit like seven threes and he's going to be the difference maker. Luke is going to have like a, a 21, you know, 21, 14, 12 triple double, but it's going to be Tim Hardaway. It scores like 32 and they're going to take like game three or whatever it is. I, I think they're going to, and they're, I honestly think they're going to need one of those games too with a consistent Luca thing. I think KP is going to be there, but I'm excited, man. I, I'm so excited for this series. And should be good. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Couple of things before we move on and then hear from Charles Mockler of Locked On Clippers. Uh, Dirk was on Bill Simmons podcast and Tim Hardaway Jr. was on Old Man in the Three, JJ Reddick's podcast. So lots of Mavs related podcasts happening right now. We'll break those down over the weekend before the game. So we'll get to those podcasts and talk about uh, there's I haven't listened to the Dirk one yet, but there's really interesting stuff from Tim Hardaway and JJ Reddick about how JJ actually helped Tim Hardaway get out of that slump recently. So We'll get into that over the weekend. Uh, coming up, we'll hear from Charles Mockler from the Lockdown Clippers podcast. But before we do, 
We've been talking about it. We've been getting into it. BetOnline.ag. It's the place to put down some money on sports. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN. Get a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Here we have some lines for you for the series. So uh, the Blazers are now a favorite, like you said, over the Nuggets. Minus 125. The Nuggets are plus 105. The Mavericks. Ooh. Oh, look, look at those. <laughs> oh, look at those Brooklyn. That Nets, Brooklyn line. Minus 1250 <laughs> to win. And the Celtics are a plus 775. That's a crazy line right there. Mavericks and Clippers. The, the Clippers were a, a minus 400 favorite. Now they're minus yeah. 370. So that's coming Ooh. down a little bit. They're, they're feeling, Am I watching this pod live right now? They're feeling the Mavericks a little bit on that one. So. Uh, and then Bucks are a minus two ninety favorite. Like you see the difference between this one and this yeah. one, they 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 feel like this one's a little bit closer that the Heat could win this one. And then the Hawks are a minus one twenty favorite over the Knicks. In that, I think that's a is that a game or a series? A series. So there you go. There's a whole bunch of different things you can put money down. Go do it, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We will be back and uh, stick around. Here from Lockdown Clippers. Hear from them. Uh, oh. But before we do, we got to talk about Built Bar. <laughs> Professional podcaster, me. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. I you tease the rest bar. of the pod in the middle of an ad. That's how that's how pro I am at this at this point. Um, Built Bars are absolutely incredible. I ate a birthday cake Built Bar today. It was great. It helped tide me over from breakfast to dinner or to lunch. And they're absolutely great for you. Go get them. Co- Couple of bars, for example, 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and only four grams of net carbs. They're really good. They're good for you. They taste delicious. Every single person on this network loves them. Go to builtbar.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 again for 15% off your next order with builtbar.com. Right, right. Oh. I'm Mabrello Balovich, owner of Mad. <laughs>